your robots.txt file tells search engine bots which pages and directories of your website they can and can't crawl, while the default robots.txt file from Shopify is fairly comprehensive out of the box, you'll still want to customize it in order to optimize your store's crawl budget. This will make sure that Googlebot is not wasting its limited time or resources to access and analyze the many low-quality pages automatically generated by Shopify and instead only crawl your most important pages. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to set up your Shopify robots.txt file and how to customize it for optimal results, even if you're not very technical. Okay, so let's get nerdy for a bit and talk about what is the robots.txt file, I mean, and how to optimize it. So as the name implies, it's just a simple txt file that you generate. Um, a lot of popular website builders automatically create them for you, including Shopify. And what this file does, it tells search engine bots which pages of your site, like you can make rules for specific pages and directories, so like folders, um, depending on how your site is set up, um, that tells search engine bots which pages they're allowed and not allowed to crawl. And yeah, so crawling, uh, just to make, make it clear, so crawling a site just means that a search engine bot has access to read the content of a page. So that just means they're allowed uh, to crawl so visit the page basically read the content and then follow links on it so that's where like do follow no follow um links come from um indexing however means that a page can actually show up in the search results so indexing and crawling get confused a lot but they're not the same thing um, usually they go together but not necessarily so yeah i'll talk about the important here of the yeah, difference between crawling and indexing and yes, yeah, so you can create rules that apply to all bots universally and also to specific ones. So you can specify, hey, for I don't want ChatGPT to crawl my site, um, Googlebot, like a lot of big like search engines, of course, and then SEO tools, other um, websites also have their own crawlers that yeah, just crawl the web. And yeah, so as of, sorry, so before 2021, you couldn't, there was no way to modify the shop, the Shopify robots.txt file. And as a workaround, you had to just no index pages if you didn't want them to show up, which still doesn't really solve the problem of blocking crawling because that means even though um, you might no index a page, so like paginated pages, product variant, something like that, and that still means that if um, they're getting crawled, that means that search engine bot still visits the page which still needs to expend resources to visit and each of your pages even though it ends up not adding that page to the index if that makes sense so yeah it's not really ideal so for unwanted pages really uh, to attack the root of the problem you want to just block crawling completely uh, if you want to just hide it from search results don't want search engine bots to waste any resources to visit crawl those pages and yeah, that's where the idea of like crawl budget, crawl budget comes into play of um, yeah, search engines only dedicate certain number of resources to each website. Um, even big sites like Wikipedia, New York Times, not going to have like constantly crawl every page every day. Um, there's only a certain number of pages that um, Googlebot will crawl each day. So we just want to make sure that most efficient as possible don't want to the bots to just crawl pages that you're not going to index anyways, low value, thin content pages, basically. So yeah, we want to save our crawl budget uh, just to make sure our main core pages are the ones that are getting crawled, getting all the attention and love from search engine robots. And yeah, like I mentioned, so no indexing is not the same as blocking robots from calling a page. So robots can still crawl no index pages. They just won't add it to the index. So an example of where you would want this to happen. So, um, so for Shopify in particular, so your collection pages, if you have only list like 20 products on a collection page, and then you have like page one, page two, page three, page four, et cetera, you still want all those products to be found. However, we don't want to index the actual like page equals to like the different variations of that collection page. So yeah, call them paginated URLs and have another video about how to no index them. Um, but yeah, we still want those particular pages to be crawled so they can still be found. So you just add like no index follow. So the robot will visit the page and it just tells it not to index it, but follow all the links, like still read it, um, still allowed to visit basically. And that's what 
the kind of difference of indexing versus crawling. And of course, uh, to see your current robots.txt file, just go to your site, uh, your domain name slash robots.txt. So yeah, here's just an example. Um, so it's just black and white txt file here uh, with different rules. And yeah, the main thing you want to check, which for Shopify doesn't really apply since pretty good out of the box, like I mentioned before. But of course, you want to make sure that this file is not blocking any important pages or directories. Um, this can happen. So say if yeah, certain pages aren't ranking, it could just be because they're blocked from being crawled for whatever reason. Um, yeah, so you can just see what the default robots.tsc file from Shopify looks like. Uh, yeah, blocks lots of different variations. So admin, cart, checkout pages, um, things like that. So this is where you can see it. And one thing you always want to have, so whether Shopify or another platform, basically to have a link to your sitemap just makes it easier. The robot's going to visit this page anyways, your robots.txt file. So if you just conveniently include a link to your sitemap, just make sure yeah, they can always easily find your sitemap, even though you should submit the sitemap in Google Search Console anyways. I just want to make that clear. So how do you get started to actually modify this? So you, um, so out of the box, you can't just, there's not a file in Shopify to modify the robots.txt. Um, here's a whole article about it. This is what I'm going to be going over here. Pretty simple though. Just open up Shopify admin uh, to edit your code and then just need to add a new template. Basically, it's already in there. You just have to go in, select it and create it. So here, I'll just do this live. So here, Shopify admin go to edit code. And then here under templates, just want to select add a new template. And then if you haven't already done this, you'll see this option here in the bottom of the drop down. So robot robots.txt, just click that done. And then there you have it. Now you can edit and customize your robots.txt file. And yeah, it's really as simple as that for just getting to the point where you can make edits. Uh, there is a link here to the help article about yeah how to edit it, which still kind of reads like gibberish. So I want to go over the key things that you want to add to this file after you create it. So yeah, here is what you want to do in order to customize it. So this, um, all the different rules that I have below are just how to customize it to block these low value pages. So thin content, duplicate pages, automatically created by Shopify, tag pages. Um, yeah, just these kind of low value pages that um, they're still on your site. They're still fine that they're there. I mean, you can't really do anything about it anyway since they're automatically created. But what we can do is just block them from being crawled and wasting uh, the search engine bots resources to crawl these low value pages instead of our main collection pages, products, blog posts, homepage, and so on. And it is also possible to remove the default rule. So you have here just by um, yeah, just the main robots.txt will have these rules automatically applied. And there are ways to remove these specific ones if for whatever reason you want to, which for, I mean, 99% of stores won't matter. You won't even yeah need to bother or touch any of these. But I just want to point out that that is possible. And yeah, I also want to shout out to, what is it, Logix. Uh, they have a really good article here, which about robots.txt, which yeah, I'm kind of just copying here, honestly, in this video, since they just did such a good job of just adding everything that you need, um, which I've already have, um, yeah, for like blog tags, collection pages, and vendor pages, uh, whatnot, but they just have a really comprehensive code here, code block of what to add to the robots.txt. But I wanted to make a video showing how to how and where to add this to your store. And pretty much all these rules will apply to most sites. There are just a few um, places that you want to watch out for and remove in case these certain situations apply to your store. So first of all, before I get carried away, I'll just show you where to add it. So here, I'm just going to copy and yeah, I have a link to this article here in the description. So just come to uh, your robots.txt.liquid file and then just here in the middle of it, 
add, just copy and paste that code snippet and then just save your changes. And that's pretty much it. It will just apply all these rules. You can see the description of what each of these does because yeah, maybe before you even save the changes, you want to just go through and make sure each of these rules applies to your store, which like I said, it will apply to most stores, but let's go over, I guess, the situations that you'll really yeah, want to be careful of here. So yeah, by default. So here's the first rule is just slash collection slash all. And the thing to watch out for here. So this is like your main collection that lists all the products on your store, which isn't really necessary because you're going to have all your products are going to be listed under different collections anyways. So yeah, it's just um, not trying to rank this page. Uh, so that's why this is added as a rule here. However, if you do keep this rule as is, it will block any collections that has like the handle, the URL of the page of that collection starts with the word all. So if you have like all products or all in this example of the store, all rings or all, all shirts or whatever, um, you want to remove this just because you will block um, this page as well. So that's, so in this store, actually, I just, open up, there is actually a page that's all ring. So in this case, if I want this page to be indexed and crawled, I'll need to remove that from, from this rule. So that's what I'll actually do here. So you can see blocks all URL variations. And you can just see a list of what this actually means. And so yeah, this is the one that we'd want to remove. So basically what this does is any collection so the asterisk is, is a catch-all um so anything so any url that has collection slash all and then anything else after the all uh, will also be blocked so remove that here in this particular store uh, the other ones these are yeah just default pages created which really no need to have those indexed so kind of skip over that uh, this next one is for if you have basically if, uh, by default Shopify will create new URLs for each product page based on which collection page you click through and access them from. So if you haven't already removed that, so there's only one, um, basically one main URL for every click or for every product, um, then this will block the crawling for all of those. So here. Yeah, I don't have examples since I already uh, removed that here for this store. But say before, what would happen is from this collection page, and if uh, just by default, since I clicked through from this eight millimeter rings page, basically what would happen is the URL of the collection page that you click through from will get added to the URL like this. So you'll have basically be the same product. Here you can see it's yeah, the exact same page, multiple URLs basically for the products, which isn't ideal. So if you do have your store structure like this for whatever reason, uh, and you keep this rule in, they'll still get crawled. So, or they won't get crawled anymore. So yeah, if you want them to be crawled, uh, you want to remove this rule, which yeah, I'm going to keep it in because you already took care of that. And I only have the main product URL. Uh, it's like the only one that we want. So yeah, that's going to keep that, but something to pay attention to. Another one, I was really, I guess this isn't much of a note, except make sure yeah, you don't change the formatting or anything, because if you put the asterisk here at the beginning, that just means it would apply yeah, to any pagination. So kind of what I mentioned before, you still want the robot to click through. So here I don't have multiple pages and or here we do actually so multiple pages so like page two page three if you have a lot of products so we still want the robot to to visit these pages but if the asterisk was over here it would just block all those sort of pages uh, so that's not what we want yeah that's pretty much the main rules to watch out for blog tags yeah d don't want those to be crawled or need them to be um so that's pretty much it out of the box like the or this code snippet takes care of all these situations. And yeah, it's really the one about 
collection slash all and the collections with the multiple slashes and asterisks in it that you want to watch out for just depending on how your store is set up so yeah just be careful with that of course you can just use this code and test it out save it um and see what happens always change it back document document your changes you can see now save the changes update or refresh the page here and now you can see all these new rules did get added to the robots.txt file here and yeah so pretty much done in terms of customizing it so that's yeah really all the thought you need to put into it just make sure depending on how your store is set up that all of these rules will apply equally and that you want to keep them in and yeah, here's a couple other resources like i mentioned really good article here that explains things um text version basically of what i just said and yeah a couple other things that you can do is in google search console so just come open up search console and then under settings here you'll see two different options so robots.txt and then crawl stats so go over the first one robots.txt just lets you know and make sure that googlebot has found your file it's been able to load it render it oh, fetch it whatever they want to call it um, you can see any warnings any errors that might pop up here um, so yeah that's how you can troubleshoot uh, just if there's any issues with the, the code maybe you accidentally added different random characters or something um, and saved it so just double check that and then the next thing you want to check or that you can check don't necessarily want to um, is the crawl report so you can see actually how many requests per day um, your store has been crawled so Say for example here, if this store had 10,000 products and then I look at the kind of the crawl stats here and it's only getting crawled three to 4,000 times per day, that means yeah, all of our products aren't being crawled. So that's kind of hammers down on the importance of making sure your crawl budget is optimized. So we're not wasting, of these 3,000, 4,000 crawls, we're not wasting like half of them or more on those low value pages. And yeah, that's really the importance of just blocking those low value pages the collection product tags blog tags um, from getting crawled in the first place and yeah, that's really the whole point of this video so just optimizing your crawl budget really and yeah there's not too much thought you need to put into it besides just copy paste and then yeah just double check make sure everything applies to you and yeah that's really it uh, for this video about how to create, edit, and customize your robots.txt file for Shopify. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about it. Uh, this video was helpful, showing you exactly the steps to take. Um, please give, give this video a like. And for more technical SEO tips for Shopify, you can check out my full training. So I have a 90-page technical SEO guide for Shopify uh, linked in the description below, the first link that you'll see. Uh, for more tips like this on yes, actionable tips on technical SEO changes to make to your store. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.